So it's, it's, it's those with clinical issues are uh, is is a is a very sort of unpleasant condition for someone to be in. And it's, it's the syndromes and the symptoms are really not good. And the prognosis are not either fresh as well. So you see, phobia can lead to panic attacks. And that is, that is how it is. So it's all linked up. These panic attacks defined by the American Psychological Association, the APA, as fear or discomfort that abruptly arises and peaks in less than 10 minutes. So its duration is a very, very sort of short duration, 10 minutes. Some can go on for, for a while, but the, the, the standard duration is 10 minutes, just, just a few minutes. But what your body is going to go through if you are the individual sufferer, you wouldn't like it and you wouldn't want it to repeat. So as I was saying, when it's consistent and persistent, it means you need support, you need help. You have to go for clinical evaluation and assessment. So, as I was saying, it peaks, the, um, peaks in less than 10 minutes, can last for several hours, as I already said. Some can last for a longer period of time. Attacks can be triggered by stress. That's the number one. Some of these panic attacks can be triggered less, even when we put phobia aside. Panic attacks individually, when you have that element of uncomfortability going on in your life, the trigger factors, the antecedents, can be stress. So stress is number one. Fear, that is the phobia that is coming in, right? fear so it's all linked it's all interwoven it's all mashed up together or even exercise some people exercise and then it brings in their what their attacks they will start panicking and even the thought of going to exercise can even bring on the panic attacks sometimes you are called for interviews individually and then if you have that sort of panic attacks, it comes in a very mild form. Some individuals goes through that stress until and unless you complete your interview, maybe your job interview or something like that. Everybody has a, 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 a tiny iota element of that panic attack or that disorder. But when it exceeds the normal threshold, then it means it's going into the you know clinical stage that needs attention the specific cause is not always apparent so which means that individually everybody has an iota an element just a tiny bit of that but when it becomes a problem when it's persistent when it is consistent when it is happening over and over again when it is getting more uncomfortable over a period of time and that is six months or more that is when you realize that no, it's, it's a problem. So you need to get it checked out, maybe diagnosis, you know, placed, and then some kind of assessment and evaluation. In addition to the recurrent unexpected panic attacks, a diagnosis of panic disorder requires the said attacks have chronic consequences. Either worry over the attacks or significant changes in behavior related to the attacks. So which means that you can get into a very difficult situation. Some of the individuals get upset and they behave with that anger. And you know, when you're angry, you can punch you can spit, you can hit, you can kick, you can jump and hit yourself. Or sometimes, unfortunately, for some people, they do these things and then they end up 
sort of losing their lives. So it's, it's a very, very sensitive situation that we don't even need to play with it. So if it's persistent for a longer period of time, please go and get it checked out. Go and get it checked out. Please go for help. The GPs are there. The A&Es, the accident emergencies are there. You know, the surgeries are there. The doctors are around. They're available to assess you, to evaluate your situation, and to plan your care. So please, if that is happening to you and you think it's being persistent and consistent for more than six months, please get it checked out. So, accordingly, those suffering from panic disorder experience symptoms even outside specific panic episodes. So you see, they have their usual panic episodes that happen from time to time. But because they go through that chemistry, through that alteration of chemistry, when the dopamine and the serotonin levels of the, chemi of the chemicals drop in their mental faculty, in their brain, there's a change of attitude, there's a change of behavior, there's a change of, you know, even speech. So the panic episodes come and goes, but because they go through that, sometimes when they are normal and they haven't had that attack, they exhibit, they display, they show that symptoms either through anger or either through their speech. So though they have that sporadic and spontaneous and isolated cases of panic disorder attacks or episodes, they still go through some symptoms when they are free of the episodes. So you see, it's quite challenging. So you need to have some support and help, please go check it out if you are going through that phase, especially if this COVID-19 has really bring out your panic disorders, please go and have a check out if it's lingered for more than six months. Often, normal changes in heartbeat are noticed by a panic sufferer, as I said earlier on that. You can have palpitations, your algorithms, your, 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 your heart, the rhythm of your heart changes sometimes up and down, faster and slower. So, the panic sufferer had a change. They have changes in the heartbeat, leading them to think something is wrong with their heart or they are about to have another panic attack. But they ain't, they're not. But because they have episodes of this attack, sometimes when there's, when there's a change in their heartbeat, they think they're going to have another attack. But maybe in reality, nothing is going to happen. But because they've experienced that, they think there's going to be another attack. So they embrace, they embrace it, and sometimes, sometimes they brace themselves for that occasion. But maybe nothing will happen. So, leading them to think, as I said earlier, that sometimes it's wrong with their heart. Some, there's something wrong with their heart. And they're about to have another attack. In some cases, a heightened awareness, hypervigilance. You know, they are, there's something called hypochondria. They, 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 those that love to be giving themselves so many diagnoses. Oh, I'm suffering from that. I'm suffering from this. But clinically, they ain't suffering from nothing. The hypochondria are there. But this is hypervigilance. So the heightened awareness of something that is hypervigilance. 
of body functioning occurs during panic attacks. So you overemphasize or you over examine the situation or you are overwhelmed by the situation or you over project or you over evaluate that this is what is going to happen but in fact by the end of the day it's not that nothing will happen in that sort of area but you think that this is what is going to happen because it alters your chemistry to the extent that you have that hyper vigilance state you'll be in that state and therefore you are assessing situation with a heightened sense of you know judgment so of a body function occurs during panic okay i've said that wherein any perceived psychological change is interpreted as a possible life-threatening illness extreme hypochondriasis that's what i was talking about hypochondriasis so which means hypochondria is someone who lives with a fear that they have a serious but undiagnosed medical condition even though diagnostic tests show there is nothing wrong with them hypochondrias experience extreme anxiety from the bodily responses most people take for granted so i've come to the end of the description of phobia disorder so it means that you have that hyper vigilance you are in that state of hyper vigilance you over evaluate you over emphasize you have a high sense of judgment you have a sort of high sense of evaluation you are even more than a professor at that stage because psychologically you are really calculating things that are not there but you think this has happened to me or you think this is going to happen to me so that's the hyper vigilance you get in that state you are more than a genius you can even calculate the speed of an aeroplane you can even calculate the sound of an aeroplane because you are in that heightened state of judgment of evaluation of assessment and it makes you very afraid and that is when you begin to have the symptoms some some of them have nausea some of them have difficulties in breathing some of them go through tremble trembling and shaking some of them go through dizziness some of them go through nausea vomiting you know so it's quite a very challenging condition that i urge the communities that you know if you are if you if you notice that your brother your sister your wife or your cousin your daughter or your husband or your brother or any member of your family is going through that and you have noticed that it's been prolonged it's been persistent it's been consistent it's been dragging it's been lingering for quite a very long time over six months then it means that you have to help them support them encourage them to see a physician to see a professional to see a GP to see a clinician to see uh, the multidisciplinary team that will really assess that person evaluate that person plan their care even if they need medication that is going to slow that down because it leads to so many things it leads to depression it leads to suicide and you know these things are not for taking for granted they are not to be taken for granted they are conditions that need to be tackled head-on you don't need to leave it for too long and then you go and say that oh had i known had i known it's always at last please get them checked out so related it to this COVID 19 if you have this panic attack and at the back of your mind you know that you've been to certain places and at the moment even the government is trying to get an app 
that is going to do contact tracing. And the contact tracing is a very difficult process and a very complicated, very intrigued, very complex sort of process. Because if imagine that your cousin had the disease and was admitted, they have to check the individuals that this cousin that is being admitted and is being on ventilator or is in a critically ill condition, they have to check all his or her contacts, those that he or she came into contact with, those that he or she met, or those that he or she interacted. And then when you get those individuals, if they are two or three, you also have to check the group, what kind of correlation or what kind of collaboration or what kind of contact did they also had in the past with other people. So it goes like a line, a lineage that you have to trace back to the last person that was in contact with that group. It's a very complex process. So you see, with all that, if you are going through phobia or panic attack, and maybe you are lucky you are not the one hospitalized, and you are the one being contacted to check that, oh, your relative is admitted, and therefore we need to test you to see if you are positive or negative. Even before the test, you go through all these attacks because you suffer from them. And if you are not clinically sort of diagnosed, you go through it in your own way, but people don't know your struggles, people don't know your story. So when you are going through that, maybe an outsider can say whatever they want to say as usual, you know, they will bastardize you or they will, you know, insult you or they will say nasty things about you, but they don't really know individually what you are going through whether it's palpitation whether it's headache whether it's dizziness whether you you've even passed out and people saying that oh this guy is just you know um playing drama or is is playing oscar performance sort of drama or is being melodramatic or the person is overemphasizing the situation Though at that state, some have got that hypervigilance. It means that, you know, they are assessing situations with a very high sense of judgment. But people won't know their story. They don't know your story. So please, with this COVID-19 going on, there is an ease. The nurseries are going back. They've been back. Those taking their exams are in school. And in September, maybe the rest are going to follow, but it's going to be a gradual process. But what I'm saying is that I'm going to continue the next time. I think the time is up. I don't want to bore you too much. The next is going to be on agoraphobia, social anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsory disorder. And... We will continue from there so that the video is not going to be too long so please check my details below subscribe and hit the notification button so that you will have alerts immediately the next video comes and then we go in for the discussions sorry the discussions again so i'll end here and then we, we carry on but make sure that you abide with the government contingency plans and the containment strategies of please wearing your mask when you go out there and when you're coming in wash your hands make sure you abide by these simple rules so that you won't be hospitalized so that you won't be hit down by this disease because it's real it is real so please please and please and please but make sure that there's anybody in your family who is going through anxieties and is really getting prolonged 
let them get checked out. Get some help for them. Thank you for watching. And I'll be back with agoraphobia and compulsory disorder, obsessive compulsory disorder, and the other disorders we discuss. Thank you and thanks for watching. God bless you. But then I decided that after my um, English version, I will hit on my language because I'm very proud of where I am. I'm very proud African. And I think when we are proud of where we come from, we should be proud of our language. In pen piano, men of my imagine says, and they can't brofuni we are because brofuni de seven seven years you couldn't cast out. Yeah, hi, hi, you need to get a new can it rough rough? No, we don't even know what we are saying. Yeah, it can be crap. Yeah, seven brofuni a cast but a bit of her say, oh, church, the museum when it comes to educational stuff, say, I say, suku seven no money, I be a dear, maybe a or the brofu cat club. Now, maybe I can come in, I can be coming to my free. Because both of you will do ye. But I have a xenophobia, no, and attacks, no, and I make a one seven. A idea, a yahoo, a walk, and crab cream. I say, who no? If you ever show one, and my enema be brave, a sick. So on a mission, you know, and I make us say, who no cosswan, a cha, and was so moon, um, doctor. What you say, now one more share. Say a yako ye crown qua na ye timi ab wow so on the mechan because um attacks in a door so say a basse in wuno a yako ye be full fra and was say open while free hospitals na uh more more yeah more juman um tini bwao na on so so we now found the what I say mm in tino may the movie see her and then we continue with the next video take care and be good.